standing committee for allocated funds, and then the committee who makes their, their recommendation how they wanted their funds to be, to be used, and then it would come back. That's why the question about uh, the, the jurisdiction budget committee was just brought up here. So I think your, rec your recommendation here, again, because this is kind of a big issue now, and especially as we're getting towards the latter part of the year, moving into next year, is the allocation of funds for community events and community needs. Are we saying that we should leave the money in the pots under the recommend under the budgetary line items and not allocate to committees? Right. Because and that's going to really change the process that a lot of the board is really worked under here. So. Okay. So that's that is a topic that you will need to discuss with your NDA, um, Lissette. Mm -hmm. So when she comes to your meeting, um, have a discussion with her. But we don't recommend for the councils to allocate X amount of dollar amount to each standing committee. But again, you know, we can do that, but we don't recommend it. But I would suggest you just doesn't matter with uh, Lissette. Yeah, because you know, real, 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 when you make a comment, first thought is that this is going to have to be, that you know we can say, well, with spring, when election is coming up in, in late spring, in May and June, it can still fall you real quick that we get into a scenario again where we're not allocating funds, getting them out the door, and they're not being processed in time for the next round of elections, and then jurisdiction passes over to another board, and then we're basically transferring these uh, monetary issues to the next group, and then becomes another can of worms that has got to be dealt with. But I just think it's something that you brought up that the Budget and Finance Committee is going to have to expedite ASAP. We're going to have to make a prioritization, prioritizing how you know, those monies are to be dissimulated, the ones that are not already pre pre approved for the budget. Uh, can we take a five minutes? Yeah. Can I ask one more question? Or maybe one more statement, please. It says here that. This, this program that you're going to try to initiate, which I'm not sure what's holding it up. Is it, is it council approval or what's holding no, it up? No, you know, when, the, when it's a, a government entity, there's a lot of red tape that you have to follow. With the banks, they don't want to issue any type of account with um, government entities because there's a lot of red tape. Yes. Okay, so that's what's holding it up. They're not agreeing on certain terms and so forth. So that's what we're waiting. We have two banks that we're talking to right now, which is uh, Union Bank and uh, Chase. Originally, we had Wells Fargo, and Wells Fargo had agreed to everything that we requested. You know, we went through the city attorney, uh, the office of finance. We all had a meeting together, and they said yes, we can provide this for the neighborhood councils. So when as we got closer to July first, I think it was a few days before July first, and they finally came on said can't provide this type of service for the neighborhood councils. And so, we were stuck. And see, the, the, the reason I'm saying this is because one of the, the things that I said here was, it says that the current demand warrant processing is unsustainable, which means that somehow the city says, hey, this is uh, too hard of a deal to do. Let's get the volunteers yeah. that are, oh, wait, let, let, me finish, let me finish this, right? Let's get the volunteers that don't work for the government, don't get a paycheck, get them to go ahead and do the work. And then on top of that, I keep thinking about the, the cardholder. Now the cardholder has to go with you, and you, and you, and you, instead of the controller just sending a check of payment. It's incredible. It's like we get less money, more work, and now, some poor person, I don't know who, it's not going to be me. Let me tell you, I'm not going to work for the city. Free, free enough. You're free enough. Now, they, they nominate right? you. Nominate. You'd be nominated, but according to the to them, you can't force me. <laughs> See? That's the question that I have. So I'm just saying, not, not against you, but I'm just saying, because this is a wonderful government. It is now finding ways to get the, the volunteers to do the work they're supposed to be doing. I'm sorry. Five minutes break, real quick, please. I have another question. I'm going to break. Uh, Ma'am, I have a question. I have a question. Okay, why do we need to have a finance committee meeting uh, if you can buy things and go around the finance committee?
really. The uh, vice president spoke that question to you. If they want to buy supplies or whatever, do they have to go through the regular process? They go through the finance and the JAG and then to the board and support from the approval in the end anyway to bring what you need to the point is committed. You can go around the finance committee. The other thing is uh, you emphasize the two signatures. The neighborhood council board allows to have three signatures. They can have a third person as a signature for that business, correct? You can have an alternate signature. That's a third person. Alternate is a third person. But that has to be approved by the department. Yeah. Nevertheless, it's still allowed. You see, but when you say you allowed to have an alternate, most people are going to think two people. Yeah. But for, the, for this program now, but for the checking account, we will only have two right. signers, not three, just two. We don't have to use the checking account for everything if we don't wish to. We right. can still go the other route, the, the old way that we're doing it now. So you're allowed to have three people. Well, like, like I said, you just don't recommend it. Hello, everybody back in chairs.
once the treasurer um, returns all the documentation that's missing, then you may resubmit the entire packet to the department, including the demand ones. You cannot just submit the missing um, documentation. It must be the complete uh, um, demand one packet. by email, electronic, electronically, or by fax, hand deliver, or U.S. mail. Uh, if you are going to send it by email, you send it to done.funding at lacity.org. This is where all your submissions should be going to. Once the department receives your um, demand warrant, it will be inter time stamped into our, our database, and then it comes to me to review. Now keep in mind, I'm the only person that reviews all 95 neighbor councils' demand lines. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I'm the only person that issues the P cards and um, approves your request for quarterly increases or unblocking your P cards. I thank you for that. <laughs> so keep in mind, if it's not complete, so we used to give the, um, um, the neighbor council's courtesy by calling you and saying, hey, you're missing a W-9. I can't do that anymore because I don't have the time to do that because I'm just one person. So I will automatically send everything back. Okay, so make sure it's complete before submitting to the department. It's going to be wasting my time and your time. And the vendor is going to be very upset not getting their payment. Okay, so the demand form requires a quarterly documentation checklist. You should have a checklist, okay? The board resolution, but now we are requesting the board's vote count form to be submitted with all funding requests, okay? You don't need the board resolution. You do not need the minutes unless I request the minutes from you. Uh, you need the two signatures, the treasurer and the second signatory. The invoices, again, must have the invoice number, the name of the company, the address, and phone number and it must be billed to the neighbor council. The vendor must provide a W-9 form and must be filled out completely and signed by the vendor. The schools as well, they must provide a W-9 form, okay? You must provide a Los Angeles business tax registration certificate. Do not just give us the number. Don't say you have it. We submitted this before, you've been made to pay before. You need for each transaction you must submit Attach a copy of the BTRC. You must attach a W-9 form for every request, regardless if you pay them before or not. Um, sign sheets, agendas, and minutes for food, for refreshments for your meetings. Okay? I know that a lot of stakeholders don't like to sign in. So take pictures, or the secretary can just give an eyeball count as to how many folks are in attendance. You cannot just provide refreshments just for the um, board members, unfortunately. That's considered a gift of public funds. You may provide refreshments to encourage the stakeholders to come to your meetings to participate. Um, if it's an outreach or publicity, we need their flyers or offers. So if you have a promotional item, either put your logo or the neighbor county contact information, we need a copy of that artwork, and we need a copy of the events, a flyer of the event. You may need permit insurance for the neighborhood improvement projects and um, any co-sponsored or sponsored event by the neighborhood council. Again, if you do need that, check with your NDA, check with those that. We must have the original receipts, no copy receipts, unless we the original. If it's paid with a check, personal check by a board member. You must provide a copy of the endorsed check, front and back. If you're not able to provide that, then provide a bank statement showing the transaction. If it's paid with the um, board member's personal credit card, you must provide um, a copy of your credit card statement. You can black out all the pertinent information. We just need the board member's name the last four number of the credit card number, and the transaction, the date of the transaction and the amount. Um, and that's the board from the university. City Department transfer information, we do you know, internal uh, transfers for record parks, uh, police department, um, fire department. 
You need to provide the department's number, the account number, the fund number, the account, the department's accountant's name and phone number so that we can um, transfer the funds very smoothly. You must provide an invoice from the uh, department. On um, every um, NPG, you must provide a community benefit statement, not, from, not just from the vendor or organization, it must come from the, uh, from the neighbor council. You have to think twice before you approve uh, funding to any nonprofit organization or school. How is this going to benefit your community? You know, they can't just ask you for five thousand dollars to um, have a breakfast at your school. How is that going to benefit your community? Okay, are they allowing the public to come to this breakfast? Are they going to have some type of program? So you need to be thinking. You know. Should we approve this or not? And the neighbor council can always ask these folks, you know, the people that come to you for grants, to come report back to you to let you know how the funds were spent. Did they spend the money according to what they requested for? Okay. <laughs> neighbor purpose fund. Okay, so this is a sample of the um, demand form that has all the different categories. There is a checklist, so you can just, you know, it will help you to ensure that you do have the proper documentation. Again, you must have the board benefit statement of approval, um, signed by both by the uh, treasurer and second secretary. Demand warrants can be submitted by mail, U.S. Uh, mail, fax, or hand deliver or email. Neighbor purpose grants. This allows the neighbor council to issue grants to 501c nonprofit or public schools from their annual uh, allocation of funds in the form of a check. Over $5,000 requires a city contract. Again, keep in mind that does take time. Uh, anything over $20,000 requires a city contract and approval of the board of commissioners. Neighbor councils must evaluate and approve grants requested for public meetings and make a financing of public benefit uh, within the benefit statement. Neighbor council must, must be in good fiscal standing. In other words, you must have all your reconciliation reports, your funding reports within our department. Um, you must have your budget on file with us. Everything that's required of the neighbor council must be on file. Otherwise, your report may be frozen. Conflict of interest law, interest law apply to every board member. Again, you must um, renew your ethics training every two years. If you have any type of relationship with the requester for funds, you must refuse yourself. Leave the room, you cannot stay in the room. Again, two, your name cannot be on the NPG application. It cannot be on a letter requiring, uh, requesting the funds. So say for example, Tammy is the executive, executive director of Bar or Barrios Action, okay? Her, her organization is requesting a grant. Tammy cannot complete that application. It has to be somebody else. She cannot sign that application. It needs to be another person. And Tammy must refuse herself. She has to leave the room prior to any discussion of this grant and vote. Okay? Um, if the school is requesting a fund, and you're a teacher, you need to recuse yourself. Or you work at the school, you need to recuse yourself because you have a relationship with the school. Tam, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah no, so if, if you uh, are, if someone else is requesting funding for their organization uh, or for a project, say, you know, um, the stallions, you know, a karate class or whatever um, for uniforms and um, uh, you, you as a board member are not the one requesting it obviously but someone else but you're close you're closely you're a board member of that organization you are you know uh, closely associated with that organization you kind of are the advocate for that organization um, do you have to recuse yourself or do yes. you work for it you have to recuse yourself you have to leave the room. Were there any other questions? I, I like to just uh, piggyback on that. You really have to emphasize on the person who leaves the room. A lot of people feel offended.
offended, feeling hurt, or whatever, or you're picking on them, it's all professionalism, and they may not understand. You have to emphasize they must leave the room. When that subject is completed, someone can bring them back. So if you happen to be very involved in the community, and you belong to the parade committee, and you belong to the art committee, and in the community, every time that any of those issues come up, you should get up and leave. Yes. Well, I don't know if that's been done in here. Well, that's in the past, so now that you know, you will be okay. served. We will be doing that from here on. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? My <laughs> yeah, ribbon. The complaints. Well, okay. So the neighborhood purpose grant package and mission checklist is the checklist. The demand warning must be um, submitted with a demand warning. The NPGs must be submitted with a demand warning. Okay? The, it must be completely filled out by the paper county, which is the treasurer, issued by the treasurer, and signed by the treasurer and the second signatory. The NPG application must be completed and signed by the applicant. You must have two signatures. Two. They must uh, provide the W-9 form, completed and signed, a copy of the BTRC, a board vote count form, again, the community benefit statement, a project of uh, budget for the applicant. If it's a 501c3, they must provide an IRS determination letter as well. This letter determine, determines what they are, what status they are, if, they're, if they are a 501c3. If they are a 501c4, c6, they cannot apply for a grant. They have to be a 501c3. Uh, if it's a public school within the LA Unified, they must provide a letter requesting the grant, the purpose of the grant, the amount, on the school, official school letterhead. And they also must provide, the public school must also provide a W9, but not a BTRC. Okay, so this is on your P card. Once you appoint a P, uh, P card holder, it doesn't necessarily have to be the treasurer, it can be any board member. The board chooses for appointments. Okay. Um, once that person is approved and appointed by the board, you need to submit the um, board uh, resolution or minutes showing that this person was approved for the P card. And this person must read and sign the letter of acknowledgement and submit the original back to the department to meet the with signatures. Once we receive the uh, P card application, I will review it and make sure and ensure that it does have all the supporting documentation. Um, it must have a work phone number and a home phone number, or you can provide your cell number as well. But it must have two phone numbers and your email address. Once it's approved, I will enter the information into the USBank system. Um, it typically takes 10 business days to issue the card, but I can also request for them to expedite to issue the card to you so you can get it within two or three days. <coughs> for me, each neighbor council has access to one purchase card, just one card. And the quarterly spending cap is uh, $4,625, and your single transaction is $2,500. Okay? So it's on a quarterly basis, and it gets replenished every four months. You receive your um, bank statements, get sent to your home or the address that you provided to us, um, usually on the 21st or the 22nd of each month. So you must review these bank statements. Um, provide your reconciliation report, which is monthly now, and get board approval for all the expenditures and the P card expenditures, and then um, send it to the department for approval. Again, there's no split um, charges or transaction. Um, purchases involving the per transactions involving the purchase of equipment, gym equipment, laptops, or computers, sponsorship services are not allowable purchase on the P card. It must be through a demand warrant. So in other words, you cannot purchase a um, treadmill for the police department or fire department. It has to be through a demand warrant. It has to be through an NPG. Okay? However, you are able to purchase a laptop for the neighbor council to use, a camera, you can use, uh, purchase that with the P card. 
is only for the use of the neighbor council. But anything else for other organizations, nonprofits, or schools that must be a demand warrant. The sum total of the monthly expenses incurred by each neighbor council will be paid by the department via a demand warrant sent directly to U.S. Bank. So we make all the payments on your behalf on your key card expenditures. Um, neighbor council are required to submit original receipts for all key card expenses. So keep a folder, have a folder, keep all those original receipts. You have 10 days after the following month of your neighbor council meeting to submit the uh, monthly reports. Safeguards have been implemented, uh, such as restriction of certain uh, merchant codes. Sometimes you will use your P cards and it will get blocked. So you need to contact the U.S. Bank appropriate number on the back of your card and ask them for the code. Once you receive this code, you will need to complete the um, P card exemption request form for you to unblock the code. You will need to provide you an invoice and supporting documentation that are for you to unlock the card or to increase the um, recording expenses. It is required that the neighbor council voting body vote and approve all uses of city funds before requesting a demand warrant or charging extended with the department. Neighbor councils are required to submit a supporting documentation with a demand warrant request and fee card quarterly, which is monthly now, reconciliation report showing approval for our expenditures. Failed to do so for some of the departments um, to process to enable to process the demand warrants for result in freezing your funds. This is the P card exempt request form um, to submit for unblocked version code. It must be done within 48 hours. Okay, because if you don't get this to us within 48 hours, it will not show on the system that you, that this card was unblocked. You can request a single transaction increase. If something's going to cost more than $2,500 a single transaction, you can approve that for you. Quarterly increase, if you do additional funds or something, you can approve that as well. However, you must require all these, uh, submit all the required documents. The approve, a board approval agenda and board vote counts, invoices, event flyers, artwork, and any other supporting documentation. And this is usually, um, within that day. Okay, so the fee card reconciliation guidelines um, it's not just a, uh, the treasurer's responsibilities, it's the entire board responsibility for, for the um, for your funds. Okay, so again, everything has to be approved by the board. Um, all financial transactions must be reviewed and approved by the board in a public meeting. And shall, be, and shall be in compliance with um, all the department policies and procedures. Keep in mind, policy changes every day within the department, within the city. So, do you all receive the uh, Empower LA newsletter? Mm -hmm. okay, if, if you do not, register online with this newsletter. This is the only way that we're able to communicate to the neighbor councils with all the updates and changes. It's, it's in that newsletter. It comes out every Friday, so we read the newsletter.
supplies, um, something to, to give to an organization or to the school, you cannot do that. That's against the public funds. It must be done through a demand form and then through the Again, there's no third party reimbursement. Um, Connie cannot have her husband write a check to purchase something for the neighbor's council and for, and for him to get reimbursed. We won't reimburse him. Okay, it has to be a board member. Again, you cannot use the funds to purchase any type of alcohol, tobacco, firearms, or adult entertainment products, and you cannot use a deficit. City property. Are there city seals? I know, I, for example, I work for Rectum Park. All our equipment has a tag with, a, with an ID number. Okay, city seal. Does neighborhood council have a generic seal number with a yeah. serial number or anything yeah. like that? Yeah. Okay. So that's basically upon us to create some sort of inventory, you know, filing number, number system. Right. Okay. And that's what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. 
and every item that you do have, it must have your logo on it or your affiliate account. It must be labels. Property of LA32. Yeah, I think that the ad hoc inventory committee will have to look at create some sort of protocol on that. Okay, you know, let me just say, what's happened the last five, the past five years, five years ago? Don't worry about that. What you need to worry about now is the present and the future. Okay? A couple of things since everybody's asking questions. I thought we were going to wait to the end, but... Yeah, I know. Let's move right. on. I'm, I'm done anyways with this. Okay. I just got to the inventory. One was the form. I mean, I was trying to follow you, but then you skipped like 10, 10 days. But when was the, there's a form, this credit card exception request form? You don't have that, right? It's not on our No, you don't have the, oh, like, sample, you don't have the sample of the form. Oh, it's okay. only issued to the pre card holder. Oh, okay. And then the, when you said about car, uh, parking lots or parking rental, how come on allowable expenses on this one, I, it says automobile parking lots and garages? What's the difference there? The difference is that you have to get prior approval from the department when you go to say you can get paid for parking. You must have proof that you attended something that's approved by the board, say a meeting. You need to provide proof that you attended the meeting um, and the parking registration. So parking is allowed and provided to get all the approval. It has to be approved by the board. Okay. I mean yeah. by the department. Okay. We've only got 10 more minutes and we got to be out of here. Okay. So no more questions. Okay. Last year, uh, the police board purchased uh, three pet way stations, and uh, we're getting a request for a motion to, pur to purchase a new one. Now, there hasn't been an inventory, but what documentation do I need to submit to done to have that investigation? What? I, I'm sorry, There was a, last, at the last, uh, the last, the previous board purchased three pet way stations that were installed at three different parks. Pet waste. Pet I'm still trying to figure out. I know they were purchased. Someone sent me a, a receipt. But there's two that are missing out of the three. So my question is, do I, do I wait for the inventory to be done? Or do I just send the request to go to investigate that? I guess wait for the inventory committee to get all the stuff. Because there's a lot of stuff that is not accounted for. So, right, Betty? I mean, my yeah, the way you get the inventory is together. And then Whatever is missing, then let us know as we need to retrieve it back from former board members or whatever it does. This is directed to um, Do we have a committee that's going to be in Where we're, well, we, have it, we have a future agenda. So actually, if Betty, you want to wrap up? Because I have wrap like, up. Okay, I'm done. I would like, because uh, right now, as a board member, we're going to have four. If we can have a, hold a special meeting to make the community impact statement out, and then another uh, special meeting.
I think this takes priority and we, we have to be together. If we do October 10th, does October 10th work for everybody at 6 p.m.? What day is October 10th and Thursday. 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 Thursday.